This is my 2006 uh, Apple MacBook Pro, which uh, is at the current time in its absolutely stock shape. Uh, I've been using this computer, I got it about a year ago, and I haven't really touched it. I've put a new OS install on it and installed Windows on the side, but uh, it still rocks the original 2GB of RAM and the original less than impressive to 120 gigabyte hard drive and I've pulled off a datasheet for it which uh, does look impressive for its time but it is copyrighted 2007 right there and the performance of this drive I can imagine is not quite spectacular so I have purchased a couple of these semi-old crucial SSD for a reasonable price considering where I live and I figured I'd slap one of these in this thing it's the same size so I should be able to reasonably easily just image over everything I got on this thing and uh, keep on trucking and I also thought I'd finally put a bit more RAM in it with some used HP 2 gigabyte modules PC 6400 which is a bit overkill since I think this is just a uh, 945 chipset which, which only does 667 RAM but yeah, they're old DDR2 modules so who cares anyway I figured we'd do a quick uh, boot time and power consumption test on this device since I am a bit curious as to how much improvement we'll see in the performance of this thing. So I've got it hooked up to my lab power supply there. And I've a moment it's drawing about 1.1 amps. The brightness set to maximum. So let's just reboot this thing and see how long it takes for it to boot up. I put my web browser on auto start. So we have a somewhat realistic benchmark. Oh, there we go, it's in sleep. I oh, better get a timer. Right, here we go. I think this is running OS X 10 point 6 point something although I'm not sure. I know that you can't get uh, that newer one lion or whatever on it properly so I'm just rocking the old version. It suits my needs. This computer isn't really used for anything other than web browsing and chatting really. And I suppose that's about what it's capable of. And there we go, we got our web browser up in 45 seconds. A bit more if you count loading the PDF. So, 45 seconds and... Well, at the moment an idle of one and a half amps is what we have. Only they drop down. Yeah. That's the power consumption we've got to beat, about 1.1 amps at idle. So, let's put the new stuff in it and see what happens. And here's the computer with the hard drive removed. Nothing too fancy about the main port. Just a bit weird in the good old Apple way. And we can see the hard drive stated 2006 month 11. So this is a bit past its sell by date. Stupidly, because I'm incapable of following instructions, I managed to break two welds on the case because I forgot to remove these two screws or remove the case. So I really hope I'll be able to get this back together without having it flop about too much, but it really doesn't look very promising. These Retention screws just are flapping in the breeze held down with the welds here. Uh, I don't usually make mistakes like that. Figures when 
When I finally do make a mistake like that, it has to be on my favourite computer. Oh well. You live and you learn, I suppose. Anyway, <coughs> to actually copy over the data, I'm going to use this old dual hard drive bay laptop and uh, DD Rescue in GNU Linux, of course. And it seems I'm quite lucky with the sizes of these drives because this is the SSD, and if we look at the total sectors and sector size, these drives are identical. So I should be able to just copy everything over right straight on, and it should hopefully just work. Sweet. Oh, there we go. We're copying straight over, and down there to the right, you can see the impressive rupert performance of the original drive. 40 megabytes per second. Now it's probably going to speed up just a bit as it gets further out the edge of a platters. But I think an SSD that's capable of many times that performance, granted it's going to be limited by the SATA 150 megabyte per second interface, is going to make a difference. But this is going to take a while though. I do like using tools like DD Rescue rather than some fancy imaging program because this is going bit by bit and I know that I'm getting every day bit of data out that I put in. So there really should be no difference between these drives at all once I'm done with them. And of course here in my workshop we only use the highest quality, most modern good condition gear we possibly can when doing critical data copying operations. I don't think the fan in this thing is quite new. <laughs> but it works. Get stuff done. And it's in too poor condition to be sold, so we even have a con have an excuse to keep it. Ha. Huh. Something I really must give credit to Apple for though, and there's a laptop as for battery. Because I am reasonably certain that this is the original battery from 2006. Because the copyright stamp on it is 2006. And you'd assume that a newer battery would be copyrighted on the year of its manufacture. And this battery keeps this computer running for almost three hours. And I mean, it's using, you saw it on the power supply, it was using about 18 20 watts. So for a specified 60 watt hour battery, that's pretty much new. And that's an eight, eight year old battery to boot. And above all, it is user replaceable. Jeez, you can't expect that from a new computer, can you? Strange that the replaceable batteries last. <laughs> and just to keep the theme up, I'm using a similar series cheap HP laptop to test for memory before it goes into the Mac because I don't really know how to run a memory test on a <coughs> an old laptop computer and most stuff I've read online makes it seem a bit cumbersome so just pushing it through this one I think this one can run it at the proper speed as well although I'm not entirely sure does it even say? yeah there we go 400 megahertz DDR800 so this one puts a bit more stress on the RAM than the Apple computer would. And it <laughs> lets me run two nearly identical cheap horrible HP computers side by side. This one at least doesn't have a bad fan. But yeah, it's not a computer I'd buy. Horrible. Touchy. Okay. 
not gonna touch that one. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Hot keys. Oh, there we go. Ram seems to check out okay. Hmm, just notice these horrible timings on it though. Jeez, that's not fast. Anyway, it's not going to need a fast computer. So, can kill this thing. Temp 2. <laughs> suppose not. And put it in the Mac. Well, there we have the full copy done. That's an amazing speed of 32 megabytes per second on average. With a lowered speed of 18. So, <laughs> that really is not impressive performance of the old drive, not at all. Even by 2006 standards. So, it's time to put all the new stuff in and hopefully do a test boot. I know that the old 945 chipsets can be a bit picky about the RAM that they eat. My other 945 based laptop won't eat some DDR800 for example. So we're hoping that this RAM will work, otherwise I suppose I'll just have to go back to the old 2 gigabytes or find some other 4 gigabytes set to put in it. The RAM doesn't really matter though because I don't do anything RAM intensive on this computer. The T7400 processor is just not really fast enough to require it. Anyway, hard drive time. Alright, so for a quick test before I put everything back together. I've mounted the SSD and the RAM. And now I notice that the file system soft lag is dirty, so I'm not sure if this thing is going to want to boot properly. And I'm going to have to figure out some way to do a file system check from within the Apple system because I, the G part that it wouldn't do it for me. So, let's see. Are we going back that far? Problem is, we've got OK RAM. Hmm. Not boding well. Ah, it does help to actually plug both ends of the hard drive cable in. There we go. That should do the trick. That's better. Not timing this way, this is just a test. I'm not sure if there's some kind of setup I need to do in order to get make OS turn a bit more SSD friendly. Certainly feels as if it's booting quicker though. That didn't feel like 45 seconds to me. So, now we've got to figure out the hard drive diagnostics, make sure everything's checks, everything checks out OK, and then just put everything back together. Uh, there we go, it was as quick as easy, quick and easy as going into the disk tool, disk utility, and pressing verify. And indeed everything seems to be checking out. So... I did verify also that the computer notices all of its RAM and it's apparently running version 10.6.8 so I think all I've got to do now is put it back together and enjoy a faster and <laughs> considerably quieter and less prone to data loss computer the idle power consumption seems to be largely the same though. Although it is slightly lower, we didn't see less than 1.1 amps at any time before. 
and any data operations is going to peak the power consumption a lot lower. So everything's good. After taking the drives out of the large computer, I also noticed that the old drive was considerably warmer than the SSD, which of course is to be expected. Oh, there we go, everything mounted back in. I noticed that the adhesive on a few of these cables wasn't really too happy to be reused, so I've taped this one down again because I don't want it flopping around and rattling. It was probably pressed up against some of this stuff and the old drive making it a bit more secure, but this drive is thinner, so there's a bit of a gap here. So, I'd rather play it safe than sorry. Also taped this cable down and put a new piece of tape over this keyboard cable. And I also cleaned up this display panel connector since the webcam in this computer has never worked during the time I've owned it. And we don't really care enough to start ripping the thing apart and troubleshooting it, but I figured this connector just uh, it's just nickel plated, it's not gold plated surprisingly, so it could have some oxidation issues. I cleaned it out properly with some isopropyl alcohol. So with a bit of luck I'll even have a webcam now. Hooray. I rarely care. <laughs> I don't think I've ever used a laptop webcam for anything useful. Either way. Time to put all of the assorted screws back together. If that's something I can't give Apple credit for, is ease of access, because while it is easy to get it apart, you do have a lot of screws to take out beforehand. So, yeah, screwy screwy. Also, a bit of a warning to anyone who, like me, wants to run one of these without the optical drive installed. These plastic clips for the case here you rarely need to shove something in this slot to support the plastic structure when you snap this thing together because else this thin aluminium strip here is just going to bend out and the clips won't go in and it will deform your case leaving you with a troublesome piece of metal to unbend so you have to be a bit creative, I think I used the butt of my tweezers for last time, but I might use my metal or plastic sponge at this time. Just as a word of caution. And there we have everything back together. My horrible mess up down here with the screws has not made any significant marks. It still seems quite sturdy. It has a bit of a deformation, a very slight deformation in the case, but it's far too small for me to care about. M the mysterious um, hole in the touchpad is a lot more disconcerting. I have no idea where that comes from. It was there when I got the computer. It's really quite noticeable. Someone's hit something quite hard in there. Anyway. Let's do another time trial to see if the boot has improved. There we go. <laughs> 22 seconds from power button to the web browser open with the PDF loaded. Oh, we aren't getting any focus. There we go. Kind of. So it's got the <laughs> it's got the boot time in half. That is acceptable to say the least. But rather the major reason I'm replacing this drive is because I don't really trust this one to keep up forever and it's making noise and one of the biggest features of this computer is that it's very quiet. Those dual Sun on Maglev fans rarely don't make a lot of noise 
at all. So I love having this computer up in my, my bedroom, using it at night. I mean, even if I put my microphone right by the fence here. It's Bella making any noise whatsoever. So, yeah, I'm not usually a fan of Apple computers, but this old thing, I can't get enough of it. It's right there, <laughs> up in my rankings with my old workhorse HP back here. My other favourite laptop, which also coincidentally has a 120 gigabyte SSD. <laughs> so, hmm, our power consumption seems to have gone back up to about 1.1 amps. Now that uh, the battery is back in it, because that wasn't in one of the last power checks. So we're all not saving a whole lot of power, not at idle anyway, but again, an SSD is going to be so much faster that <laughs> it's just going to run better and quicker while using the same amount of power. And it's going to use less power when it's actually searching for files. Sweet, sweet. I suppose that rounds up a video. Well, I might as well boot it up at Windows and do a speed test, actually. Oh, well, there we have our disk performance. Now, I, I honestly don't really care about the performance of my drives, so I have no idea if this is good or bad. But what's obvious above all things is that uh, these two or probably these four results at least are limited by the SATA 150 interface that it's running. So I wouldn't be surprised if all of the results are. But I mostly buy an SSD in order to have a bit more data security. I don't like having mechanical drives on my laptops. And no matter what I think that's faster than that with thing ever did, I should actually have done a benchmark on it before I <laughs> swapped it out. It would have been a bit amusing to see. It's probably about a fifth as fast on every single point, even if we include the limited interface for this SSD. Hmm. <laughs> Something's gone horribly wrong over here. Hmm. Oh well, I never run Windows on this thing. It doesn't really work right. It tends to hard lock for some reason. And also, it tends to use more power. I don't know if that's intentional on the part of Apple, which wouldn't surprise me. Or if it's just poor optimization on Microsoft's part. Either way, this computer's done. Thanks for watching. Cheerio. Well, I will be damned. The SSD has bought me almost, or well, it's bought me over an hour of extra battery life. I did not expect that, not in the slightest. Oh, <laughs> and an extra 35 minutes came from nowhere. And yes, this battery is in calibration. Surprisingly, I would not believe this if someone told me that it was. Also, Merry Christmas, December 24th. Cheerio.